Assalamu alaikum and welcome to another episode of Making a House a Home with myself, Sana Araji, and our guest, Fahima Mohammed, a qualified life coach and a NLP practitioner. Assalamu alaikum, Fahima. Alaikum salam. Now, um, today we're going to be discussing um, how to reflect during Ramadan and what does it mean to, to reflect during Ramadan. Um, can, can you emphasize on this? For yeah, us? absolutely. Um, reflections normally people take it upon when something's actually gone. Mm -hmm. But I want to talk about reflecting during the time. Yeah. Because when you do it during the time, then you can actually increase that benefit mm -hmm. um, and you can actually keep up the memento, yeah. which is what we require because it's a long month <coughs> and it's very testing. It is a journey and experience for all of us. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is to draw us closer towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to obviously abstain from sins and, you know, to increase in our worship and prayer and charity and mm -hmm. everything. <clears throat> but while we end the month, we can continue with all of this and it can become an autopilot. Yeah. And we can actually lose f sight and focus on its meaning. And reflecting during this month is when it's really most beneficial to us. And there's several ways to do it. First of all, looking, you know, within ourselves. Yeah. You know, our minds, our bodies. And the best way to do that is, you know, seeing how are other people responding to us because that's a good indication as to how we're behaving. Mm -hmm. yeah. And when we have good responses, you know, at work with our colleagues, we always have and keep up a certain way of, you know, treating others, so that's why we get treated well. Yeah. But sometimes we find that in our homes, mm -hmm. <coughs> we don't have that happiness and fulfillment, not just in Ramadan, but just generally. Mm -hmm. And we'd use excuses that we're tired, we're working, or whatever it may be, the children, yeah. you know, things like that. But we need to reflect and our attitude, and our behavior, mm -hmm. and our mental state, yeah. especially towards the ones that we are responsible for, mm -hmm. and are responsible for us. It works both ways. Yeah, you know, between spouses, between siblings, between you know, uh, parents and children. Yeah, definitely. The elderly, yeah. and that's all in one household. Mm. Yeah. And it's really important that we reflect that when we're doing our prayers, when we're worshiping. That's not separate to the way in which we are acting and behaving. Because it's in between our salah that we should also be testing ourselves as to how are we taking across and learning from that salah. Yeah. We don't just close that prayer mat, the sajada, you know, fold it, put it away, and it's different. And we talk to Allah in that period of time when we're doing our salah or in dua or in tasbih, whatever it is that we're doing. Yeah. And then when that's over, then we have an attitude which is not necessarily reflecting upon what our teachings should be towards each other in the house. Yeah, yeah, definitely. It's almost like we've forgotten that Allah is watching us all the time. All the time. Because we switch on maybe during prayer, well, prayer time. Yes. And then once prayer is done, we forgot about that spiritual connection that it's not just during the prayer. Yes. It's during, you know, every single day of every minute. And there's lots of issues in the home right now. Yeah. There's a lot of, you know, um, sort of challenges that are faced, you know, with regards to our houses mm. and the relationships that we have with each other. And especially when we live, you know, under one roof, it is, it is challenging. And there are definitely, you know, things that we're going to come across with each other's changes and with each other's ways of being that we may not be satisfied and happy with. Yeah. So we need to constantly check ourselves. And this month is the best time because this is when we're increasing our awareness generally. So it's a good way of trying to increase our awareness yeah. as to how we are acting and behaving, especially to our loved ones. Yeah. And there are our loved ones, don't forget. Yeah. So we need to constantly remind ourselves that because there are loved ones, don't just be nice to your secretary at work or your boss or your friends. Bring that home. Yeah. And there's blessing there. Actually, that's going to give you that credit, extra credit. That's going to give you that extra success. That's going to bring you and take you to the next level in your life when mm. you bring a smile to the person that deserves it most. Yeah. And it's the one that gives you that support, even if it's not physical. Even if you think that, oh, she's only at home looking after the kids, you know. Yeah. What, I'm the one that's working hard, for example. Yeah. Or, you know, I'm the one that's taking care of the children. He's the one outside having, you know, lunches and, you know, even though he's at work. It, it's both ways. You know, we can have these sort of issues. Yeah. But we each and every one of us has a role. And we have to bring support 
and understanding towards that. Yeah. And when we have that reflection, then only our salah, only our worship is actually being utilized in the right way and we can see the benefits and reap the rewards. People are like, why is my du'a not answered? Why is my life so, you know, same? And why is it not improving? It's because you're not learning. Every day in our salah is a learning. Yeah. We don't use it like that. We don't reflect in our salah and also try and take those reflections and imply it practically in, in our daily habits, in our routines. Yeah. And the treatment of others is so vital. It's so important. And this is the time that we need to start creating these new habits between us yeah. for each other. Definitely. Yeah. And I think it's, it's, it's just so you know, important to sort of you know, talk about this because it's very much you know, brushed across. Definitely. I think it can be a challenge for Absolutely. a lot of people. I mean, I, I know of people where they find it challenging to, to balance that and, and to yeah. be consistent and to have that self-discipline all, all the time. It, it's, it's quite it's quite difficult for some for example if the husband is out working all you know all day and he doesn't know of the hardships that the wife is ha yeah. having at home and vice, versa, and vice versa if the man is at home and the wife is out they don't know how each other's day has been yeah exactly so that that can be difficult and it can be a challenge uh, to kind of maintain the spiritual uh, spiritual uh, behavior of Ramadan shall I say and and keep your mind focused and, and not take out burdens upon each other, would, would you That's say? That's true, of course, because in order to actually reap the benefits, it's not just about the worship, it's having that comfort around you to, in order for you to actually practice nicely. Yeah. When you've got something in the back of your mind, when someone's not treating you properly or mm -hmm. not talking to you in a particular way and you have some sort of issues between each other, yeah. even when other family members come over and you can pretend and you know, have this sort of facade in front of people, you know, it's side it shows. Even, you know, concentration level, a lot of the time, is not there. Yeah. You have sleepless nights. You don't have that peace of mind when the person that you should be the closest to, the ones that, you know, you rely upon, the ones that you've, you know, had promises made to one another. Yeah. <clears throat> Even over time, if it does differ and change, it should always still have the foundation and the basics there. Yeah. Even when you don't like that person, you still got to be there to support them and, you know, sort of like, you know, fulfill that responsibility. Yeah, of course. Saying yeah. nice words or saying nothing is probably better yeah. than, you know, having that harshness. Yeah. And it's no point being angry and lashing out and doing everything right in your Quran, in your Salah, in your charity, and then you have a rude word to say to somebody or a bad, you know, language that's been said. You know, all of these things make a difference and this is the reflection. Yeah. This is the reflection about how we need to be. So, as you said, it's difficult. Well, in my line of work, everything that we need to create for ourselves is creating a new habit. When I study NLP, it's, you know, neuro-linguistic programming. Okay. Neuro is the way in which we think. Mm -hmm. Linguistics is the language we use. And the program is how we, as humans, create our habits. That's the programming. So we okay. just need to rewire, just like a compu mm -hmm. computer and upload okay. new information new things and yes it takes time but this is the best time to start because this is when you have that awareness this is when you want to do things differently yeah so you can carry it forward exactly so take this time to reflect not just on the specific and the regulated and the obligatory duties those duties are there for you to take home yeah literally home and practice it on your family yeah practice it with that don't just go to Dua Kamel, don't just go to the Amal and listen to the lectures in the mosque and then come home and have a different attitude. Yeah, definitely. I know we were discussing on previous episodes about time. Yeah. Now, actually, some people might find they have more time during Ramadan because they're eating less. So they're having to prepare less meals during the time, d during the day. So perhaps maybe would you say people could utilize that time to reflect yeah. uh, or, you know, to, to kind of... Uh, have a look at their behaviors during during the month of Ramadan and Absolutely. see you know do you know what I actually do I mean me myself I find although I have a hectic, hectic lifestyle I do find that during Ramadan I do have a bit of time because I'm not having to maybe prepare as many meals and yes, it's just, the, it's one just meal. the one meal yeah, and so enough. maybe if I have a few hours <laughs> instead of yeah. focusing on just the cooking yep. I can maybe use that to read some Quran maybe read some dua do some supplications or just maybe think 
you know, what, what is it that I'm trying to achieve? What do I want? What am I trying to uh, gain during this Ramadan? So, yes. uh, you know, maybe perhaps... That's definitely what you've just said also way. had made me remind uh, what I would like to say next. And when you're saying about uh, reflecting and yeah. how to do that specifically, I know we always emphasize and we have to pray and we have to read Quran and yeah. increase our worship. But to take time out, because we, as humans, we do need to take a break from everything and balance. Mm -hmm. And the way in which we can reflect in a really good and healthy way as well, which is for our body and mind, is to meditate or do some yoga. Yeah. Does it mean that we're fasting and we cannot ex you know, exert ourselves in a physical manner? But those sort of things, even if it's for five or ten minutes, it can make a huge difference to everything that you're feeling. Mm -hmm. And yeah. meditation is really powerful. It's also part of reflection. Mm. Even if you meditate a couple of minutes before Salah to prepare yourself for that, or you meditate just during the day, like you said, as used as reflection, or in the, you know, in the night before you sleep. Yeah. Those things are really useful, and that's being mindful as well. As a mindfulness coach, you know, having a certificate in that, I have also advised all my clients to be focused. Okay. When you are focused in the moment, you are much more at ease because your mind is not wondering about what you should have done, what you could have done, or what you're going to do. Because you're just in that moment concentrating on what it is you need to do for okay. that time. Okay. So you're less stressed and you are much more you know, balanced because you're just living by the moment, doing what you need to do then, then moving on to the next, and then moving on to the next. And it is a control thing. It is a habitual thing that you have to create for yourself over time. Yeah. But when you have that awareness and that thought creeps in every time you feel a little bit of anxiety and stress and you just hold yourself back you know and breathe we okay. don't breathe yeah. we don't even you know take those steps to even just breathe yeah. and you know just take in whatever we need to for that moment mm -hmm. and pause that's when you can have those reflection okay. reflective times okay and that's when you can you know focus on yourself what is it that I have done in the day what have I done to that I can improve? What have I done that was actually, you know, made me feel good about myself? Or what could I have done better? Okay, yeah. And that's really things that we need to question daily. But in Ramadan, we can do that even more so. Because that spirituality is alive. You know, that awareness should be there anyway. You know, yeah. just reading Quran, like, you know, you know, all the time without actually reflection is no real benefit, really. Mm. Reading Salah and, you know, all the extra worship is there and we should do it but that's why people feel that they are in a mundane groundhog day sort of like you know routine because they're not utilizing yeah it's like you know you just you just like brushing the surface of what it is that the keys and the treasures are of this religion yeah definitely you, i mean it's like almost like a tick off list so yeah. quran i'm going to make sure that i read the whole quran yeah. the whole uh, yeah. i'm going to focus i'm going to do this amount of pages and you just tick it off yeah but maybe not everyone is doing reflect you know reflection exactly. as with that of course and with with the mindfulness and 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 the kind of uh the techniques that you were just ex explaining yeah. uh can someone do that in a busy environment if, for example Absolutely. if you have children running around oh my gosh um, yeah does it have to be quiet no. or, or can it be like a you know busy i'm so household? glad you asked that question because a lot of the time we think we have to be in a zen place yeah. <laughs> that's what <laughs> i thought <laughs> the thing is um you know i i actually have a good technique that you know and a way of thinking that in order to be mindful is that you've got to sort of this time around actually put yourself in a bubble yeah. even amongst the chaos yeah you know so that you can actually perform and be your best regardless of your environment Mm. And that's when you are in control and that's when you're powerful. Okay. And it's a good technique to have children teach, uh, you know, have as well. Yeah. Because if they're in a chaotic classroom and the teachers, you know, not being able to control the children, but they can still sit down and concentrate and do what they need to do. And if that was instilled from a young age, that is extremely powerful. And we can do that as adults all the time. Yeah. You know, it's just, like I said, it's being focused even amongst the noise. I guess you don't think about it doing with children because you automatically think children won't be able to sit down. But you know, I've it's used similar techniques with my children and I know others who have yes. where they've done yoga before bedtime and yeah. that really stimulates them and it also winds Calms. them down. Yes, absolutely. So if you have maybe hyperactive children, I mean, try that because yes, it, it works. works for me and it my works. children, uh, you know, it, it winds them down before bed. So I think it's kind of a good technique you can yes. do with your children, yes. don't you think? Of course, it's a really good thing to do as a family. Yeah. Because, you know, we do have the daily stresses of life. Not to say that it doesn't exist, of course it does. But, mm. you know, 
that, like I said, there are techniques, there are things that we could do that could bring us to this place that we need to be. Yeah. And especially, you know, in, in order to sort of like benefit to the maximum in this time, you know, in this spiritual month and to make it the best is to be in those moments. Yeah. And that's when you will reap the benefits and the rewards to the extent that you'll be much more satisfied. Yeah. Because definitely. that learning then has become practical. It's all about the practice of it, not just being in a parrot form where you will just recite or just perform in autopilot mode. Yeah. And like you said, taking off the boxes yeah. without any sort of like reflection as to how is that impacting in my daily routine and life? How is that impacting in my attitude, in my, you know, my daily sort of like, you know, behaviors? Now, these are the things people just totally ignore. Mm. And they expect it to just come round. No, you've got to work for it. You've got to make it happen. You've got to take and seek the knowledge as well in order to know that this mindfulness exists, this meditation exists, this technique and strategy and the tools are there. Yeah. So um, this is not just about everyday life living. You can use it for your religious purposes. You can use it to benefit you so that you can actually, you know, take this level to a level which is what you never expected. Definitely, yeah. And, and what, going back to when we were discussing mm -hmm. about behaviour between spouses, yeah. um, would you say communication is vital because oh, that could perhaps reduce any sort of problems between the spouse? Definitely. So at least they have an understanding of actually what their day has been like, maybe just messaging each other saying, you know, look, I've had a bit of a stressful day. Yeah. So warning them. <laughs> so, so <laughs> yes. yeah, like a pre-warning. Yeah. So when they come home, you might not just, you know, you might just be a bit more understanding and a bit more patient. Of course. Do, of do course. you think that that's something that, that is all good? But you know, do? communication, you know, we use it very loosely, but communication is wide. And the language we use and the way we say it and the physiology, like our body, you know, language says yeah. a lot, you know, we can say the right words use the right language, but with the wrong attitude, it can come out totally different. So your intention of saying something first needs to be good. Okay. Because even when you're texting something, yeah. right? If the intention's not right, trust me, the other person will read it the wrong way. And they will feel you. Mm -hmm. I, f I feel I can sense people through their text messages. Yeah. You know, it's powerful. <laughs> it really is. So you need to have the right intentions for whatever you're doing and especially in something like this. Okay. So have you know, reflection in order to increase and improve your actual intention because all of that, your heart and mind and body will you know, sort of like come out in your behavior, okay. in your character yeah. and your virtues. And this is what we need to reflect on as the role models that we are you know, here to sort of you know, learn from. In yeah. the Ahlul Bayt, you know, this is what it was about, the character building, the virtues, and that comes from prayer. How? People don't understand how because they're not reflecting. Yeah. They're definitely. not using that source. And it is a tool. And they're just seeing it as a physical activity. We know it's much more. Yeah, definitely. And it, and it can be quite testing for parents when mm -hmm. they're trying to keep with the spirituality of, of Ramadan, but they come into conflict maybe with uh, family relatives. Yeah. And, and these can impact uh, how your, your your mental state and, and also your ability to to kind of uh, keep calm and cool yeah. and and that can also impact your children's behavior so children are so observant they can monitor you know their mum and their dad they can see how how their of behavior course, is and and, and and they will react upon that as well so it, it kind of reflects reflection in general kind of um, impacts the whole family home yeah, and when you are tired and hungry and, you know, you're basically fasting generally, you know, to meditate is a really good way of yeah. relaxing you so you forget that and it brings it back, it hones it in as to the reality of why we're doing this. Yeah. We know that, yes, there are people out there that are less fortunate to us, but we don't actually feel it. But when you meditate, you can feel it. Yeah. You can feel it in so many ways you would not even imagine. You know, and though, yeah. that's what the beauty of it is. And that's why, you know, the job that I do helps so many people in so many different areas. And it can take into any speciality. I'm nicheless. It can go anywhere and everywhere. Businesses, you know, personal relationships in whichever area you actually want it to. Yeah. And in any situation. It's very, very informative. And it comes from our religion anyways. It's just that we don't know how to read it. 
Inshallah, yeah. I mean, thank you very much, Fahima. I mean, you've given us great insight on this topic, and Inshallah, like we can all try and implement this and, and try and reflect a bit more during uh, the, the holy month of Ramadan. Um, inshallah, we're going to go for a break now, and we'll be coming back answering some of the viewers' questions. So, Inshallah, we'll see you soon. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to the second part of Making a House a Home. Uh, we've been discussing uh, how to reflect during Ramadan and the ways we can reflect during Ramadan. Um, but now we've got some questions from the, our dear viewers um, that I'm going to put forward to you, Fahima. So um, our first question is um, from uh, Zahra and she says that she's a mum of, of two and she finds it hard to keep cool. And, and calm down during Ramadan, especially with young children running around, how can she uh, implement, um, you know, mindfulness or reflection in her day-to-day -day life? Yeah, um, the thing is, it's not just in Ramadan that you have to actually be cool and calm. For children generally, it should be a practice always. Mm -hmm. It's not nice to be treating anyone in that way, let alone, you know, um, in a particular time of month. And yes, it's definitely challenging and you know, you're tired, you're hungry and your stress levels are like beyond norm. Mm -hmm. And when you've got crying children or whatever, then yes, you know, we as humans, we are going to perform as humans as well. Yeah. The thing is, it's not about totally eradicating these sort of moments. The fact is, um, we have to grab whatever feelings we have and we have to hold it in, accept yeah. it and then let it go. And that's one way of looking at it. So if we're angry, what do we do? Normally we'll tell our kids, you know, count to 10, so pause. So before it comes out of your, your mouth, you know, instead of letting it out, you know, yeah. try and have some sort of self-control, self-restraint. You know, restraint. That's the whole idea as well of Ramadan, is to practice this. So that because it's not just, you know, in this month that you have to control yourself and have a good attitude and be nice and kind to your family and friends. Yeah. It's for you to carry forward throughout the year. Yeah. So, you know, don't get sort of like carried away thinking, you know, all of this and obviously it's I understand the fact that with this time of month it is a lot more stressful and um, most people cannot have that real control that they would normally have but at the same time you can look at it and say because it's a month of blessing mm -hmm. that actually I'm gonna be a bit calm and I'm gonna let things go yeah you know there's a different way of looking at it yeah so you can look at it at that and say you know I'm not actually gonna even you know worry so much about the little things that's gonna actually get my back up so much yeah and that's another way of looking at it so that your reactions and your behaviors will change with that attitude yeah so you think about what it is that upsets you what is it that your child does in order to get you in that situation and be more advanced in your preparation in your planning you can foresee it you're a mom you know your child sometimes and obviously things happen randomly too but that's the odd cases mm -hmm. but usually we know in our households how things work yeah and we can plan and prepare for it so it's about planning and preparing. And like I said, if you were to practice yoga yourself, if you were to meditate yourself, that brings upon a calmness within you that little things do not annoy you. And mm. you're focused in what you need to do. Yeah. And your responses to other people, especially your children, is really vital because you're teaching them how to also respond by, you know, you doing it in a particular way. Yeah, that's great advice, definitely. And, and the child, if they were perhaps to also, like we were saying before, also do some mindfulness or yoga, yeah. that could calm them calm down. Them and down. then ultimately, there wouldn't be so much chaos within the home for, for the parents to, to get upset. Yeah, a lot of the time it's lack of organizations. You know, we're always behind in time mm. because we're not planning. We're mm. not preparing. And yes, things do happen randomly, but when you're prepared, you can, t you can act upon that randomness yeah. and you can prepare for it, even if it's last minute because all the rest have already been taken care of. And yeah. you know, things do happen in that way. 
Yeah. So the basics should always be there. You know, you need to be militant in your household. You know, with your children, with their education, with their learning, homework, with your cooking, with you know, with your relationships, in the in your attitude. All of these things is you know part of life. It's a balancing act, yes, and we're juggling more than one or two, three things in the air. But that's the whole point of it. Yeah. And Ramadan is a good way of training ourselves and reminding ourselves how to be and how to behave to mm -hmm. take it for the rest of the month. Okay. So, you know, try that out with regards to being mindful and doing, you know, yoga is really, really, really good because, you know, our body needs it anyway. Yeah. The exercise doesn't mean that you're fasting and you cannot do anything. It's really, really relaxing. Inshallah, that's great. We can try and all implement yep. bits of that in our life. Um, now, the second uh, viewer is Layla, and she says, uh, what tips can you give on getting the most benefit out of the last few days of uh, Ramadan? Or already those last few nights of Ramadan is very special. It's a blessing in itself. Yeah. You know, it's the night of a thousand nights where, you know, it's the most blessing anyways. Mm. So obviously, you know, just having that knowledge, knowing that, you know, yes, we, we should sleep and we need to rest. But if you were to give yourself that time to do, you know, more worship, in that in those last few months mm -hmm. then ab absolutely you know make the effort to do that and plan for it take some time out you know people can take time off work I know a lot of the people they do for the last few days of Ramadan so it is something that if you love you'll take time out just like for a holiday yeah make that part of your holiday plan yeah so you can actually reap benefits in a proper way and, f and for the rest of the family yeah and even if your kids are at school and they can't take a break but you at least you have that that you know that break yourself so you can be up all night and you can relax maybe time during the day if you have to. But, you know, so you actually, you know, the nighttime prayer is so beneficial. It's so important to do all the rest of the actual worship, you know, reading extra Quran and helping and being outside as well in the community. And, you know, um, and educating yourself. Because we, we hear the same stories every year, year mm -hmm. upon year, when it comes to Muharram, when it comes to Ramadan. But you'll be so amazed if you go back and just sometimes always reflect on the on the beginning and then the foundation and the spirituality and the essence. Mm. These words are not used anymore. You know, this is what it is about Ramadan. And when you have that reflection and you take that time to even read books, even if you think I know it, but maybe read it to your child to remind them and yourself, you'll pick things up that you never did before or you'll remind yourself of things that you've forgotten. Yeah. Exactly, and yeah. that's when you can make the most of this month. And we don't know, really, you know, whether anything is going to be accepted. So it's all about having the right intention. Yeah, definitely. And like you were saying about, uh, you know, taking time off, prioritizing certain yes. things, rearranging your timetable. So for the last few days, you mm -hmm. can, you know, let things go so that you're yes. able to do, uh, you know, your worship and, and prioritize. And even if that means, you know, like you were saying, taking a day off so you're able to sleep. Yeah. I guess you, that that is better to do for yourself, so you can gain the blessings and 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 the reward for, from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Absolutely. So um, that 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 was great advice. Um, now we have um, another viewer, uh, Laith, and his question is: um, If I cannot perform the amal on Laylat al Qadr um, as I'm on a course, uh, will I not receive the same blessings? You know, even when we have time and we're doing everything. We honestly don't know what's been accepted and what's not. Yeah. And a lot of the times when we're doing everything, we see people quite arrogant and egotistic, thinking that because we've done it, we've sat there every night, that we are, you know, we are like the ones that are like, uh, we've given all the reward and blessing. Yeah. But we still don't know. So just having the intention of wanting to do something, even if you haven't done it, and your mouth, your tongue is always available for some sort of, you know, worship and prayer. So even if you're not having the time, if you're on your course, whatever it may be, that you don't have the, the real sort of time to sit down and do the amal like everyone else, but knowing that you have that heart and that intention and that love for Allah and that you want to seek that closeness, yeah. that is the connection. People can do all of these things, but they have no connection. So it's all about having the intention and the right connection. And even with whatever little you can do, you will be given blessings. Yeah. Just your thought, feeling that you're not doing enough, Allah will give you the rewards yeah. more than the person that's doing it for real. Mm. And that's the most amazing thing about it. Yeah. And people don't realize that. 
It's true. It's all about your, your need, your intention to, to do so. I mean, going back to what you were saying about, you know, there are some people who, who do uh, that a mile and they yeah. do everything and that you know mashallah that's amazing but um i know some instances of some people where they've gone to uh, uh pray in in masjids in mosques and they've had instances where it s situations where uh, everyone kind of looks out for themselves and mm -hmm. they just want to go and they don't want to call others to come jo join with them yes, to do that actually and i know of of certain situations with certain individuals where this has actually happened whereas surely we should be trying to get everyone to do it all together because them getting a blessing and a reward is like you're getting a reward exactly. and we should be more inclusive in that way because you know everyone at the same is is in, is in the same boat and we all want uh, to be uh, blessed from Allah so it's always good to kind of get everyone involved and not just think about you know it's my amal it's just for me and yeah. I, you know and me I me me and it. I just need to do it because it's my structure and routine let's think about others around us so it's good that you had mentioned that because you know there's a, a few instances where situations Absolutely. have happened I mean, like that yeah we we have to be selfless yeah exactly in everything that we do and actually even if it's taken away from our obligatory because we're helping someone else to do theirs first yeah. you don't even know if that reward is going to come to you too exactly yeah because that's what character building is that's what the virtues and you know is what we know of mm. in the ahlul bayt yeah and that's why we need to constantly remind ourselves of these stories and that's when we can actually, you know, live it. We always say, oh, they, they're too high, infallible, we cannot reach that. Yes, we can, in the most basic level, just by not being selfish. <laughs> that alone is something that we can do. Yeah, use them as our role models. They're exactly. our teachers, the best of teachers. Of course. So we might not be exactly like them, but we can try and strive. Take steps, yeah. And, and do the same things that they, they've implemented in, that, in their lives and try and take it and, and learn from it. Absolutely. Because they're the best of teachers, so we should embrace their teachings and, uh, in our everyday life. So, you know, I just think generally, you know, reflection in this month is extremely important. Yeah. And we normally re reflect at the end of the day, at the end of Ramadan, at the end of whatever it may be. Mm -hmm. But reflect daily. Yeah. I think that's what the main issue is. And reflect upon ourselves first. Because, you know, we can be the influence. We can make that difference. And it starts with us. Yeah. You know, we are the change that we want to see. It's a very famous way of saying it because everyone knows it, but do we practice it? No. And put what we feel that we have learned and what we have prayed into our practice itself. That's the difficulty, That's isn't the difficulty. it? Yeah. There's no point in you praying and then having an attitude which does not match and preaching that you do not practice. All of these things make a difference. Yeah. And that's what we need to constantly remind ourselves. Even if it's two, three things like, like just what I've just said yeah. is enough to improve us yeah. and to make us move forward. And it will discipline us as well so that Definitely. we get used to that routine. And so when we need to, it will, it will be easier for us Definitely. to reflect and as often as possible. Um, so thank you very much for that. I've got one more question um, and that's from Bushra. And she says, what is the advice we can give ourselves to improve our character? Well, we just mentioned the role models, yeah. and I think that's the best way. And they have the most testing trials and tribulations. So in our lifestyle, in our daily routines, mm -hmm. we're so, so, you know, um, lucky with everything that we have. We're so fortunate, yeah. and yet we still complain. So to improve ourselves, go back to that. Re-educate, re-remind yourselves completely, constantly. And the foundations are only going to be solid when you constantly reflect on those foundations as well. Because, you know, those basics are the ones that are the pillars. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to keep you strong. Okay. And if you want to, you know, improve in your character, like I said, you know, watch people around you as to how they respond to you. Because, you know, not everyone's going to give you the correct information, obviously, that you have to be aware of. But the ones that are close to or you're with constantly, continuously, you're going to understand as to why they're acting like this towards me, why they're behaving, because, you know, is it me? We've got to take responsibility for that. Mm -hmm. So it's a good indication as to how we are ourselves, if we're going to get constant feedback in a particular way. And when we get constant feedback in a particular way, we don't like it, we either defend ourselves, or we either retaliate, or we either counter, or whatever it is, instead of saying, hang on, was it really me? What is it that I did to make her or him think and act and behave in that way or respond in that way? Now that's taking responsibility. Yeah. That's you know being okay with being wrong and that's okay with being someone who wants to improve and who's trying to improve. Because mm. we all have our shortcomings and shortfalls. Yeah. And we have that in different stages in our lives. 
and we go through stuff that we sometimes, you know, we forget ourselves. Okay, yeah. So um, to build yourself and to build your character, okay. it's just constant reflection. Look in the mirror more and don't compare yourself to somebody else ever. That, that's the thing, isn't it? When we compare ourselves, that, yeah. that's where the problem occurs. Do you think we should embrace our... our um, uh, how can I say this, uh, embrace the things that we've done wrong so that we can say, do you know what, we've done it wrong. That's how it, can I I, I'm, I'm wrong, so let, how can I move forward? Yeah. Do, you, do you think that could help build yes, a definitely. good character? It's not even, yeah, it's definitely that. It's, it's basically comparing yourself to your previous self. Mm. That's all it is. Okay. So, you know, you, you reflect upon yourself as to how you were and how you've improved and what more you can do and what do you want to inspire to. And um, one of the techniques as well that I use as a success technique is in businesses where you have a role model, whether it's the Ahlul Bayt or a real person that you know, or a celebrity even, it doesn't really matter. Okay. As long as you have someone above you mm -hmm. that you feel that you want to you know, mirror, and you, you study them, you study them completely, and that's your success, and you act and walk and you know, even talk and dress and think like them. Yeah. And that's what becomes you know, the character that you want to be and build. Yeah. And that's a very, very um, useful technique to use. Yeah, and, and if you have uh, friends yes. and you can perhaps Look up pick, you. Pick, mm -hmm. up, pick out the good things about yes. them and, and implement that in your life. I mean, I know I do that myself where, you know, if I have friends, I'll look at and I'll ask them for advice and I'll pick out the good things and I'll try and implement implement it in my life Absolutely. and if it works it works if it doesn't I'll move on yeah. and find another thing and I'm, I know many other people who have that similar technique so I guess we could perhaps try and maybe use that way of, of building our character and and and, and 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 look forward in in that direction and open yourselves more um, to outside you know the views um, read a lot more yeah you know that opens up thoughts and ideas that we never dreamt of and yeah. I think it's really important to do that when you're seeking things, you know, these self-help books and development books, or just, you know, reading a biography of, if, of a role model, whatever it may be, see their journey, mm. and that will actually build you. And, but, you know, obviously with us, we have so many characters and, you know, the best of characters. Yeah. And we only concentrate on the few when there is a whole, uh, you know, legacy of them. You know, the 12 Imams, each, each and every one of them yeah. had something that we can learn from. Exactly. There's so yeah. much wisdom in there. Mm -hmm. which we don't even take the time and knowledge to even you know read about yeah and they each had some as you know aspect in their lives that we can learn from or take from definitely in so many ways yeah and, and the women of yes. Ahlul Bayt as a woman you could perhaps look into the lives of Fatima al Zahra alayhi salam, Zainab alayhi salam, Ruqayya alayhi salam you can look into their lives of how they were tolerant how how their character was and, and implement parts of that in, in your life and inshallah that should help you build a good character. Definitely, definitely. And it, it brings about things that we don't use in our vocabulary anymore. It's about mm. being patient and grateful, you know, counting your blessings. Because yeah. we always, you know, especially in this day and age with, um, with social media, we mm. obviously, you know, we framed to seeing and looking at things in a lens which is very much narrow. And it's only in that moment, and we make it like as if it's their whole lifestyle, and we're the ones that are, you know, missing out, or we're not doing what the other person's doing. Yeah. But actually, you know, we are so blessed. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah. So we need to really uh, reflect on that more than anything. Yeah. And to see, you know, that the characters that were around at the time of the Ahlul Bayt, we need to bring about those vocabulary again about patience and gratefulness. and and implement that with ourselves in our own families, in our own homes. Yeah. You know, be kind to one another, even when you don't like that spouse that you're with for that moment. Yeah. Be kind, <laughs> be respectful, you know, be civil. Yeah. Once that is there in place, no matter what the situation, you will eliminate anything else that's bad. Just having that respect for each other. Yeah. And building a friendship. We lose friendships with our families. We don't have family friendships anymore. We only think that it's friends for outside. No. We need to be friends with our children at times. We need to be friends with our husbands and wives, our parents even. Yeah. We need our time as friends. Definitely, yeah. You know? And as we mentioned before, you know, the outside community and society are looking at us. Yeah. So we need to give them something to look at, which is good. Definitely. And, and talking about character, if you as a, as a parent have that character you can teach your children so that they don't have issues and that they are they're instilled from a young age that this is the way 
to, to, to build a strong character. So when they go out into the wild world, big wide world, they're not going to find it such a, an issue. They're going to be strong and confident, independent, and have the, the teachings of Ahlul Bayt inside of them. Definitely. So I think it's not just uh, ourselves that we need to think about. We need to think about the surroundings as well. well the impact so, that we have. And wouldn't it be so wonderful that if your child was ever asked what is trustworthiness and what does that mean? Yeah. And they look at their mum and dad and say, that's what it means. And that's what we need to sort of aspire to become. Yeah, inshallah. Well, that that's really great, a great insight. Thank you very much, Fahima. Um, we have, I've definitely learned a lot, and I'm sure our dear viewers have learned a lot from this uh, subject. Um, so we've, e we've reached the end of the show, unfortunately, but inshallah, um, uh, we've all gained uh, great insight uh, and knowledge uh, from this topic. Thank you, uh, dear viewers, for sending in your questions. I I hope that um, we've answered them for you and inshallah we'll see you next time on uh, making a house a home um, and inshallah we've all benefited from uh, uh, this conversation. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.